The mysterious death of actress Natalie Wood, wife of actor Robert Wagner, is back in the news. The whole world mourns the death of 43-year-old movie actress Natalie Wood. Miss Wood won the hearts and minds of fans of the silver screen everywhere. In the murky depths of Hollywood's most enduring mysteries, one name stands out, Natalie Wood. Her tragic death in 1981 has puzzled and haunted millions for years. But now, her husband, the renowned Robert Wagner, the primary suspect in her death, has finally spoken out. What dark secrets did he reveal about this enduring enigma? Join us as Robert Wagner at 93 breaks his silence on Natalie Wood's death. Rise to fame and film career, born Natalia Nikolaevna Zakharenko. In the vibrant city of San Francisco, Natalie Wood's early life promised a remarkable journey that would eventually become shrouded in mystery. Her story begins in 1938, the year of her birth, to Russian immigrant parents who sought a new life in the land of opportunity. From the beginning, it was evident that young Natalia possessed a special spark. She started acting at age four, an exceptional talent discovered by sheer fate or fortune. Her first notable role, which would set her on the path to stardom, was in the beloved Christmas classic Miracle on 34th Street in 1947. Even at such a young age, her on-screen presence and natural charisma captured the hearts of audiences. Transitioning from child star to teen idol is challenging, but Natalie Wood did so with grace and determination. Her role in Rebel Without a Cause in 1955 marked her transition to teenage stardom. This film, alongside the legendary James Dean, catapulted her to the status of a teen idol, capturing the essence of youthful rebellion and angst that resonated deeply with the audience. How does a former child star navigate the tricky world of adult roles? As Natalie Wood ventured into adulthood, she faced unique challenges and opportunities. Breaking free from the confines of teenage roles was no small feat, but she did so with a series of performances that showcased her versatility as an actress. One of her most significant adult roles came in the 1961 film Splendor in the Grass. In this emotionally charged drama, Wood portrayed Deanie Loomis, a young woman grappling with the complexities of love and desire in a repressive society. The film delved into themes of mental health and societal expectations, and Wood's performance earned her a well-deserved Academy Award nomination. This role hinted at her capacity for deeper, more nuanced characters. Another milestone in Wood's career was her role in the iconic musical West Side Story in 1961. She took on the role of Maria, a Puerto Rican immigrant caught amid a tragic love story. This film showcased her remarkable talent, not just as an actress, but also as a singer and dancer. Her portrayal of Maria was tender and heart-wrenching, earning her a Golden Globe nomination and cementing her status as a versatile performer. Throughout this transitional phase of her career, Natalie Wood earned recognition as an actress who could seamlessly transition from one role to another. Her ability to portray various characters with authenticity and depth garnered critical acclaim and nominations from esteemed institutions like the Academy and the Golden Globes. But amidst her professional successes and the adoration of fans, Natalie Wood's life would soon take a turn that would forever be shrouded in mystery and ominous circumstances. Personal Struggles Beyond the Spotlight Natalie Wood's life, although filled with the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, was also marked by personal struggles that remained largely hidden from the public eye. Beyond the spotlight, she battled depression and relied on alcohol to cope with the emotional stress that came with her career and personal life. Wood's journey to stardom was not without its challenges. From a young age, she was thrust into the limelight, and the pressures of fame began to mount. Her role in Rebel Without a Cause marked a pivotal moment in her career, earning her critical acclaim and an Oscar nomination. However, the path to securing this role was fraught with exploitation, reflecting the darker side of Hollywood that many young actresses faced during that era. Moreover, Wood's personal life was complicated by relationships that often made headlines. Her affair with Frank Sinatra when she was just a teenager is one such example, highlighting the complexities of her early experiences in the industry. 
This relationship, initiated through her mother's ambitions, was kept secret due to her age, adding another layer of secrecy and burden to her young life. Tragically, Wood's life was also marred by a brutal assault at the age of 16, an event that left her deeply traumatized and fearful. The attack, allegedly by a powerful Hollywood figure, was never reported to the police, remaining a hidden scar that Wood carried with her. The emotional impact of this event was profound, contributing to her struggles with mental health and her reliance on substances to cope. As Wood navigated her career and personal life, she also faced challenges within her marriage to Robert Wagner. The fairy tale romance that captured the public's imagination was not immune to troubles. Infidelity and the pressures of living in the public eye took their toll, leading to Wood's increasing dependence on sleeping pills. This reliance on medication was a coping mechanism for the turbulence she experienced in her personal relationships and the demands of her career. Relationships and Marriages what happens when the star of the silver screen finds love in the midst of Hollywood's glitz and glamour? Natalie Wood's personal life was a tale of romance, complexity, and intrigue. Her first brush with marriage came in the form of actor Robert Wagner. The two stars first tied the knot in 1957, a union that captivated fans and the media alike. Their romance appeared straight out of a fairy tale, the epitome of Hollywood glamour. However, like many Hollywood love stories, theirs too had its share of ups and downs. The marriage faced challenges, leading to a divorce in 1962. But as fate would have it, this was not the end of their story. Can love truly conquer all, even in the mysterious world of Hollywood? Against all odds, Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner found their way back to each other, rekindling their love and remarrying in 1972. The couple's second marriage promised a fresh start, with the hope that they had found the lasting love they both longed for. Natalie Wood's romantic journey took another twist with her relationship with British producer Richard Gregson. This relationship was different, and it quickly blossomed into marriage in 1969. For Wood, it was a chance to explore love beyond the confines of Hollywood. With Gregson, she ventured into a different world, embracing a sense of international adventure and a break from the familiar. Amidst the whirlwind of her professional life and her complex romantic entanglements, Natalie Wood also embraced the role of motherhood. She welcomed her first child, daughter Natasha, with Robert Wagner in 1970, marking the beginning of a new chapter in her life. Motherhood added depth and fulfillment to her existence, offering a sense of purpose that extended beyond the silver screen. In 1974, Wood and Wagner welcomed another daughter, Courtney, into their family. The joys and challenges of parenthood combined with the ever-present demands of their careers, creating a unique dynamic within their Hollywood household. Natalie Wood's was a life that held promise and fulfillment, but it was also a life that would soon be overshadowed by the tragic events that occurred on one fateful night, forever casting a shadow of mystery and intrigue over her memory. The Fateful Night How does an ordinary night on a yacht turn into a haunting mystery? Did Natalie Wood slip and fall into the water and drown as she untied the small dinghy and tried to step into it from the stern of the yacht's splendor? On the evening of November 28, 1981, a sense of allure and intrigue hung heavy in the air as the yacht Splendor set sail along the glistening waters off Catalina Island. The vessel, a 60-foot yacht named Splendor, became the stage for a haunting enigma that would forever change the narrative of Natalie Wood's life and death. On board were three individuals whose presence would soon become inextricably linked with this mystery. Natalie Wood, her husband Robert Wagner, actor Christopher Walken, and yacht captain Dennis Davern. The trio's presence added an element of celebrity glamour to the scene, but it was also a gathering marked by underlying tension. To understand the events of that fateful night, one must delve into the deep-seated fear that had haunted Natalie Wood throughout her life. It is said that when she was a child, her mother took her to a gypsy psychic who made a chilling prophecy. The psychic reportedly told her mother that Natalie would someday meet a watery grave a fate intertwined with the element she so deeply feared. From that moment on, water became a constant source of dread for Natalie. Her mother, Maria Zakarenko, 
took the prophecy to heart, instilling in her daughter a profound fear of being near or in water. It was a fear that would persist throughout her life, as she remained consistently hesitant of venturing into aquatic environments. Then, how ironic is it that an actress known for her beauty and grace met her end in the very element she feared? Was this a twist of fate or something more sinister? As the night wore on, the atmosphere aboard the Splendor grew increasingly complicated. Conflicting accounts of the events leading up to Natalie Wood's disappearance would later emerge, casting an aura of mystery over those fateful hours. But what we do know is this. In the early hours of November 29, 1981, as the yacht Splendor floated off Catalina Island, Wood vanished without a trace. The details of her disappearance would become a perplexing puzzle that continues to captivate the public's imagination. Initial investigations into Wood's disappearance were conducted swiftly, but the findings did little to dispel the cloud of mystery. The circumstances of that fateful night would be scrutinized in the years to come, but in those initial moments, the case appeared to be closed. So what truly happened that night on the Splendor? And could there be more to the story than met the eye? Questions and Inconsistencies On the fateful night of November 29, 1981, Natalie Wood's life ended in a shroud of mystery and unanswered questions. Her body was discovered in the waters near Catalina Island, California, following a night of tension and tumult aboard the yacht Splendor. Though her death was ruled to be accidental, as the years passed, inconsistencies in the accounts of those present on the yacht and emerging evidence prompted a closer examination of the circumstances surrounding her demise. Wagner and Wood were known to have a tumultuous relationship, characterized by a blend of deep affection and intense struggles. Their marriage, marked by a breakup and a reunion, was often the subject of public fascination. On the night of her disappearance, it is believed that tensions were running high on the splendor. Wagner, in his 2008 memoir, Pieces of My Heart, described an argument over the acting profession leading to Wood retreating to her cabin, while the dispute continued between himself and Walken. However, actor Christopher Walken, who was also aboard the yacht, painted a different picture, suggesting that there was no significant quarrel that evening. According to Wagner, the evening proceeded with Wood retiring to their cabin around 10.45 p.m., while he and Walken continued their conversation. Upon later checking the cabin, Wagner found Wood missing, along with the dinghy. This led to a search and the eventual tragic discovery of Wood's body the next morning. However, this narrative raised eyebrows, particularly considering Wood's well-known fear of water. It seemed unlikely that she would venture out alone in a dinghy, especially during the late hours of the night. The official ruling of Wood's death was initially accidental drowning. However, the autopsy revealed multiple bruises on her arms and an abrasion on her left cheek. The coroner initially explained these as superficial and likely sustained at the time of drowning. However, a re-examination of the case years later suggested the bruises might have occurred before Wood entered the water. This revelation added to the suspicions surrounding the circumstances of her death. Dennis Davern, the captain of the yacht, initially supported the narrative of an accidental drowning. But his admission in 2011 that he had omitted crucial details about the night's events further complicated matters. He claimed that after returning to the yacht following dinner ashore, a horrible, horrible fight broke out, fueled by Wagner's jealousy towards Walken whom he suspected of having an affair with Wood. Davern described Wagner's anger escalating to the point where he smashed a wine bottle on the table. This altercation, according to Davern, led up to the moments before Wood's disappearance. Davern's revised statements also suggest Wagner's role in the aftermath of Wood's disappearance was not as straightforward as initially portrayed. According to Davern, immediately after Wood went overboard, Wagner gathered Walken and Davern and stated, this will be our story, implying a deliberate crafting of the narrative surrounding Wood's disappearance. Furthermore, there are allegations that Wagner might have tried to keep the investigation into Wood's death low profile, a claim that adds another layer of mystery to the already complex situation. Davern, who continued to work for Wagner for years following the incident, later expressed his belief that Wagner was responsible for Wood's death, a conclusion he arrived at after reflecting on the events and Wagner's subsequent behavior. 
One of the key witnesses, Marilyn Wayne, on a nearby boat, reported hearing a woman's desperate cries for help around 11 p.m. She recalled the words, Somebody please help me. I'm drowning. Her call to the harbor master went unanswered, as the situation was initially dismissed as a possible joke due to a party on another boat. This testimony conflicted starkly with Wagner's actions, as he reportedly hesitated to turn on the yacht's floodlights or call for help, doing so only around 1.30 a.m. The varying accounts, delayed response to calls for help, and the nature of the arguments on board added to the mystique surrounding Wood's death. The reluctance to seek immediate assistance and the changes in the stories contributed to an enduring mystery. While the exact truth of what transpired on the Splendor remains elusive, these elements create a narrative filled with speculation and unanswered questions. Davern's about face on the events of that night further fueled the mystery. His belief that Wagner was responsible for Wood's death, which he arrived at after years of reflection, added another layer of complexity to the case. Allegations also surfaced that Wagner might have attempted to keep the investigation into Wood's death low profile, raising suspicions about possible motives and actions taken to obscure the truth. Author Samuel Peroni's six-year investigation into Wood's death also played a pivotal role in reopening the mystery of Natalie Wood's death. Peroni's extensive research uncovered new evidence and testimonies, suggesting that the original investigation had overlooked critical aspects. His findings exposed discrepancies in the accounts of those present on the yacht, including Wagner, Walken, and Davern, and hinted at a more intricate web of relationships and motives. The new evidence that emerged highlighted several significant details that had not been adequately addressed during the initial investigation. This included a scratch in the midline of Wood's throat, tardieu petechiae on her lungs, and numerous bruises on her body all suggesting a more violent scenario than an accidental drowning. Additionally, there was a question about why certain forensic evidence, like fingernail clippings and nail scrapings, was not collected during the original autopsy. The re-examination of Wood's death also brought to light new insights from author Suzanne Finstad, who released a biography of Wood that contained new information suggesting that her drowning was not accidental. Finstad's research included access to the murder book, the official record of a homicide investigation, and uncovered clues about what transpired on the last weekend of Wood's life. Her findings point towards Wagner's involvement, indicating that he declined to search for Wood for a significant period when she went missing from their boat. Amidst these revelations, the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office made a significant amendment to Wood's death certificate in 2012. The cause of death, initially recorded as accidental drowning, was changed to drowning and other undetermined factors. This alteration reflected the growing uncertainty about the events leading to Wood's death. The addition of other undetermined factors implied that there might have been contributing elements to her drowning, elements that were not identified or sufficiently explored in the original investigation. The reopening of the case and the change in the cause of death transformed Wood's passing from a closed case into a subject of active investigation and speculation. It raised critical questions. Was there more to the story than an accidental fall into the water? Could someone else have been involved in the events leading to her death? The shift in the official stance on her death opened the door to various theories and conjectures, ranging from foul play to negligence, and everything in between. Yet, despite these efforts, definitive answers remained elusive, and Natalie Wood's untimely death remains a puzzle that defies resolution. The enduring enigma surrounding her passing serves as a stark reminder that even in the spotlight of Hollywood, some mysteries remain hidden in the shadows, haunting the legacy of a beloved star. Robert Wagner a person of interest. In the reopened investigation into Natalie Wood's death, her husband, Robert Wagner, emerged as a pivotal figure, shifting from a grieving widower to a person of interest. This transformation in his role in the case was marked by several factors, including changes in his narrative and his reluctance to engage with investigators. I, I don't pay very much attention yeah. to it, Natasha, because they're not going to redefine me.
Wagner's accounts of the events that led to Wood's disappearance and subsequent drowning in 1981 have been scrutinized for inconsistencies. Initially, Wagner described an argument on the yacht splendor involving himself, Wood, and actor Christopher Walken. According to Wagner, the argument led to Wood retreating to her cabin, and he did not realize she was missing until later. However, investigators noted that Wagner's story evolved over time and did not align with other witness accounts. This discrepancy raised questions about his involvement and what he might know beyond what he had shared. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, which reopened the investigation in 2011, expressed particular interest in speaking with Wagner. Lieutenant John Corina of the department pointed out that Wagner was likely the last person to see Wood alive. Corina also noted that Wagner's versions of events did not match those of other witnesses, suggesting a possible alteration of his story over time. This mismatch between Wagner's accounts and those of others contributed to the mystery surrounding Wood's death. Investigators also highlighted that Wood's autopsy revealed fresh bruises, which Detective Ralph Hernandez described as appearing like those of an assault victim. This physical evidence further complicated the narrative of Wood's death being a mere accident. Despite these suspicions, the authorities have not been able to conclusively prove whether her death was a homicide or an accident. Wagner's refusal to speak with investigators since the case's reopening added another layer of intrigue. His lack of cooperation was seen as significant by the authorities, who believed he might hold crucial information that had not yet been disclosed. However, it's important to note that Wagner was not labeled a suspect, but rather a person of interest, indicating that the investigation was still seeking more information that he might provide. Theories and Speculation the mysterious death of Natalie Wood has given rise to various theories and speculations, each with its own set of supporting evidence. One theory suggests that Wood's death was a tragic accident. The original autopsy reported that Wood had multiple bruises on her arms and a facial abrasion, which could be consistent with a fall overboard while attempting to board the dinghy. The coroner initially ruled her death as an accidental drowning, supporting the idea that Wood may have slipped and fallen into the water while trying to reach the dinghy. However, this theory has been questioned due to the actress's known fear of dark waters and the condition in which her body was found. Wearing a nightgown, down jacket, and socks, which seemed unusual for someone attempting to handle a dinghy. Another theory revolves around an argument between Wood and Wagner, or between Wagner and Walken, that escalated. This theory is partly based on the statements of the yacht's captain, Dennis Davern, who reported a tense atmosphere on the yacht, with arguments occurring throughout the weekend. Davern recounted that Wagner was visibly jealous of the interaction between Walken and Wood, and that the jealousy reached a peak on the night of Wood's disappearance. There were reports of a loud argument, a wine bottle being broken in anger, and Wood and Wagner going down to their cabin, where shouting continued. This theory suggests that the heated argument might have led to a series of events resulting in Wood's accidental fall or a more direct altercation. The theory of foul play emerged as a more sinister explanation for Wood's death. This hypothesis gained traction following the case's reopening and the amendment of Wood's death certificate in 2012 to drowning and other undetermined factors. Some speculated that Wood might have been a victim of an assault, given the nature and number of bruises on her body. The captain's later statements alleging Wagner's responsibility and the reported delay in Wagner calling for help after Wood's disappearance added to the suspicion. There was also a witness who claimed to have heard a woman screaming for help from the direction of the Splendor, which further fueled the theory of foul play. Unresolved Conflicts on Film Sets the filming of Rebel Without a Cause was a pivotal moment in Natalie Wood's career, marking her transition from a child actress to a serious Hollywood star. However, the path to securing her role as Judy was fraught with challenges, shedding light on the darker facets of Hollywood's working environment and its impact on Wood both personally and professionally. Natalie Wood's journey to being cast in the film was anything but straightforward. Despite her early career as a child star, director Nicholas Ray was initially hesitant to consider her for the role due to her public image as an innocent actress. It wasn't until a serendipitous event, a car crash involving Wood and future co-star Dennis Hopper, that Ray saw Wood in a new light. 
Wood leveraged this incident to demonstrate her ability to embody the role of Judy, ultimately securing the part after impressively declaring herself a juvenile delinquent in the aftermath of the accident. This anecdote not only highlights the lengths to which Wood had to go to break free from her typecast, but also underscores the exploitative nature of Hollywood's casting processes at the time. The set of Rebel Without a Cause was a microcosm of Hollywood's broader cultural and social dynamics, characterized by off-screen tensions and complex relationships among the cast. Wood found herself in a challenging working environment, navigating a web of personal and professional relationships. Notably, there were rumors of romantic entanglements and professional jealousies, particularly involving director Nicholas Ray and co-star Dennis Hopper, which added an additional layer of complexity to Wood's experience on set. The film itself, with its themes of teenage angst and rebellion, mirrored the societal shifts occurring in the 1950s. Wood's portrayal of Judy, a young woman grappling with her own identity and familial relationships, resonated with audiences and marked a significant moment in her career. However, this role also placed Wood at the center of a cultural clash, reflecting the evolving attitudes towards gender, sexuality, and family dynamics during the post-war era. They do have a little better equipment than we have. They're trained as paramedics in search and rescue. The film's portrayal of troubled youth and the underlying critique of parental and societal expectations added an additional dimension to Wood's off-screen challenges. Moreover, the narrative surrounding Wood's character and her strained relationship with her on-screen father highlighted the film's engagement with contemporary issues of femininity and paternal authority. Judy's struggle for her father's approval, set against the backdrop of her burgeoning womanhood, mirrored Wood's own navigation of Hollywood's expectations and the societal pressures faced by women during this period. Thanks for watching another episode. Click the next video on your screen for more.